I am excited and always gratified to have so many amazing friendships that have come out of this this business and this this job and this next our keynote presenter today has become she's a mentor she's a friend uh she's a commiserator and a fellow uh traveler down the road uh we're fellow drama babies we have a lot a lot of things that we we have clicked on and and shared um deep dark stories in the middle of the night over a over a, uh, over a beverage but uh she is always here with with brilliance to help people along the way as well she is the trainer of trainers please help me welcome my friend sherry prindle hey thank you so much this is exciting i enjoyed everyone's conversations and they're going to feed right into what i'd like to share today which is your cosmo headline so I was excited, Jonathan, to hear your sort of origin story slightly. I am going to go there too. Jeff, you kind of shared your origin story as well. And I graduated college thinking a bunch of people have college degrees. What makes me different? And I had been in Japan as an exchange student. So I decided, ooh, that might make me different. So I went back to Japan and I lived in Japan for five years overall. And then I went straight from... Japan, Fukuoka, Japan to Moscow, Russia. And it's kind of a, this, that's not the story I'm telling today, how I ended up there. But uh, when I was there, I ended up getting a job at a radio station and I had my own radio show. Uh, it was six to 10. I, I mean, it was during the day. Uh, well, I started, I'm sorry, I had my radio show, but before that they hired me to do the news in English. So I would go in all day long and there was the the newswire, the Reuters newswire, and I would pull stories and adapt them to radio and rip and read them uh, at the bottom of every hour. This particular radio station, because Moscow was a media market of 11 million people, lots of multinational corporations, embassies, so a real demand for English language programming. So that's what I did. And I started getting fan mail and I, it, people liked me. So they gave me my own show. It was the Morning Zoo, Utrini Zapark. Uh, and it featured, you know, Sherry and Larry. So it was, it was uh, really exciting. But I got to be honest, it was kind of fluffy, right? It was just, uh, we did wake up calls and, you know, we talked about pop culture and played music. And I always just wanted to be a real journalist. So I hung out at the press club when I could. And I actually talked the radio station into getting me a membership in the press club. And right about the time I was there, the White House was attacked. Look it up. It's actually pretty fascinating. Um, my fellow real journalists, the people that were really out there, they were going to the White House, which was the, uh, the, the uh, parliamentary building, the Moscow Parliament building. They were going there every day because what was happening was there was getting to be more rebellion. And one day the Communist Party, they took over the White House. They kicked out everybody else they took over the white house and they began uh like not letting people in to the white house and so these journalists were going there every day they were interviewing people i was so envious because here i am on my morning show talking about pop culture and i just i just longed to be a part of this enormous story that was going on around me but i wasn't really a journalist so i told everybody at the radio station they said hey let me know if something happens with this thing because I feel like if I'm the if I'm the English language news person and something big were to break out and we're the radio station, we're the radio station in Moscow that has English language news, I want to be there. I want to be a part of, you know, what makes that break. And so here she is, right? You know, just this this little girl who, you know, was an only child and, and kind of didn't know what was going on, who was kind of put on stage at a very young age. Here I was in the middle of crazy culture of Moscow morning radio and in a city that was about to undergo, I guess, somewhat of a coup. So I was about to leave work one evening and Olga the Russian journalist that was on that day stopped me and she said, Sherka, there are tanks. There are tanks right now rolling through the streets of Moscow. So I came back in, 
And I looked on the Reuters newswire, the international newswire. There was nothing there about this thing. But I knew it had been coming to a head that it was coming. So I waited around and we had two newswires at the radio station, the international Reuters newswire and the ETAR TASS, which was the Russian newswire. So a little bit of information started coming through the Russian newswire. And as it did, Olga would rip me a copy of it. I would translate it real quick. And what used to happen was that we had one set of English language programming. It was six to 10 in the morning. And then we would have hourly news broadcasts at the bottom of every hour. But when we left, there wouldn't be one in the evening. Well, what I did was every time Olga came on with a news report, I came on with her and I translated what she said from Russian into English and spoke it in English. So in the middle of that night, we got a big pound on the door and a couple of Russian uh, militia like uh, officers with Uzis <laughs> came to the radio station and said, you're a media outlet. We want to stand here and protect you. So they stood at the doors of the radio station and protected us. And I'm like, this is real. real journalists. This is so cool. So I ended up staying at the radio station for more than 48 hours. So I, because the, the, it was a fast story, I knew it was going to come to a head very quickly. So I just stayed there the entire time that this was going on. I just didn't go home. And I just kept doing that where I, because the, the Reuters newswire finally got news of it, but it was just really sparse. The news was really sparse. So I did that. I did that all these days. And People were asking me, like, like, why did you do that? Where did somebody ask you to do that? And I, I want you to think about yourself. Think about that, that eager self that maybe you were at one point, maybe every once in a while you still are. That part of you that you're just so excited. It doesn't matter if someone's paying you. If they, if no one asked me to do it. In fact, if I had asked, can I do it? They probably would have said no, right? Thank goodness it happened after work hours. The bosses, the bosses weren't there. And I just started doing it, right? But after it was all over, half thinking that I would get in trouble for doing it, uh, the boss actually said, hey, you know, nice job with the, what you did with there with the news story. Oh, we've got some trade outs with KLM Airlines. If you want to go and do your, you know, go home for, you know, because I used to go home to the United States once a year, we'll pay for your flight. So I am there in the airport. I, they, they, it's KLM. So I'm flying through Amsterdam. And I, I have this layover, this long overnight layover in Amsterdam. and. I go out on the city. I head back into the airport waiting for my flight. I went into the little newsstand and bought a copy of Cosmopolitan, like the international version of Cosmopolitan, and I'm reading it. And really reflecting on, you know, what happened. If it was, you know, a silly thing for me to do, if it got me any closer to my dreams, you know, what in the world was that blur? But you know how you say this. Haven't you heard yourself before say, if just one person gets helped, right? When you go out and do your talks, right? If only one person is, is, is influenced by this message, then it will have been worth it, right? So I had always said that. And especially when people were asking me, like, like, why did you do that? Where I was almost embarrassed that I had done it. So I'm reading this Cosmopolitan, flights delayed. So I'm having to read it from cover to cover. And there was a story in that Cosmopolitan magazine about what had happened in Moscow. Uh, and I wasn't going to read that article because I got to tell you, nobody in the English speaking world knew more about what had happened in Moscow than I did. But flight still delayed. Very last thing I read in the uh, uh, Cosmopolitan was this story that happened to be written by an American journalist who was just visiting Moscow at the time that this happened. And she talked about her experiences she was out in the street. She didn't know where to go. And she kind of chronicled the whole thing, like when it first started, when she saw the tanks, how she went and took refuge in the embassy. And in the midst of her story, she said, and we, she wrote, we tuned in with obsessive punctuality to Sherry and her hourly one minute English language bulletin on Moscow Radio's Channel 7, our only source of news. I've never done this keynote before, Jeff. I've, I've known that I've had this story forever. So it's, it's um, evoking emotion. So she mentioned it a couple of different times, the radio broadcast, the things that I said kind of syncopated her story. Sherry's hourly news said snipers uh, were at large in the vicinity of the White House. 
And there I was, you know, after it was all over, having said, if just one person has helped, then it will have been worth it. Now, here I was in the midst of that, and I had proof, positive, that at least one person was helped by what it was that I did. So I didn't become a famous journalist. <laughs> you know, I could have, I guess. I mean, I, I kind of got a taste of it there. I didn't end up becoming a political consultant. In fact, I speak Japanese and Russian, and I never use those languages today. But remember what Jeff Klein just said. He said, everything that I ever did prepared me for being where I am today. Remember what Jonathan said about how he was just a Star Wars fan, but he saw this cool new techie thing that he wanted to do, and, and he pounced on opportunity that being in that moment at that time gave him. And remember what Wanda said about thinking of a time when you really helped someone, you did something for someone. And all of those things really fit together in my wanting to ask you, what is your Cosmo headline? As you think about who you are and where you are, you know, what things have you aspired to? There I was this whole time thinking, gosh, I wish I were a real journalist, kind of like Pinocchio wanted to be a real boy, right? And it turned out I was, like the whole time, I was a real journalist. You know what a real journalist is, who gets to say, but what if everything you aspire to, you aspire to because you already have the makings of that thing in you. So think of things that you used to aspire to. What did you want to be when you grew up? What have you kind of given up on? And if you have any of those that you'd share in the chat, that would be wonderful. And then, oops, there's no R in the R. What are you, are, you know, how are you already that? Like, how is it that you are already the thing you aspire to? I'm going to suggest, just like I was already a journalist, you are as well. And then think about something you've done that's noteworthy. You know, I happened to luck out. The reason I told the whole story about being in the airport was I would never have known about that article. Like, please understand if, if right after that situation happened, if the boss hadn't come up to me and offered me a vacation, then I would not have been there, right, outside of Moscow in the airport at the time to be able to read that copy of cosmopolitan. So I feel like it was all, you know, right there. I happened to be there. I happened to buy that Cosmo. My plane happened to be delayed or I would never have known, right, who I helped. So what is that thing that you've done, that one person that you have helped, that thing you've done that's noteworthy? And, you know, maybe it didn't get picked up by Cosmo, but it just could e as easily have, right? It was just by, by chance that I was able to see that article. It was just by chance that that woman was in Moscow at that time. And it was just by chance that she happened to tune in to my radio show. So in the end, as you think about you, Everything you've aspired to, you can't have aspired to it if it's not already you. What you've done that's noteworthy has helped at least one person. Unfortunately, you may not actually know, but just knowing that you, knowing that you've done those things and sharing that you've done those things, like all of us have done here at Speaker Co-op, that's where speaking gets so powerful is that you get to do the good deed, but you also get to tell others the story of having done the, the good deed. And that's the gift that keeps me giving is the gift of speaking. So I would love to ask that if you have something that you aspired to be when you were younger, something that maybe you aspired to be when you were older, that maybe you've given up on, something that has made a difference that maybe you haven't told the story about, that you share about it in the chat and think about what your Cosmo headline might be.